Hi, I'm Brian Bellendorf. I'm Executive Director of Hyperledger, which is an initiative hosted within a consortium called the Linux Foundation. Sure. So Hyperledger is a uh, coalition of over 250 different companies uh, and thousands of developers, beyond, even beyond those companies, working together to build a, a collection of open source software that is in this field of distributed ledgers and smart contract systems, broadly stated blockchain technology. Um, all this software is built publicly. It's shared under something called the Apache, soft, uh, Apache license, which is an open source license, meaning anybody can use it. You don't have to pay a fee. There's no royalties. There's no coin either at the center of this. Um, our hope is that it helps light up thousands or tens of thousands of these networks out there of people using this software to do these distributed ledgers. So blockchain technology uh, is, uh, uh, it, 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 there's, there's an excitement to it that feels very similar to the excitement in the early days of the web. Uh, I, you know, I remember in 1994, 1995, setting up websites and thinking, well, every company will have a website someday and every company will sell its products online and other people doubting that or, you know, like you would never buy a car online, right? Well, it turns out lots of people buy their cars online or do 95% of their research now about how to buy a car online. Um, uh, and so uh, that same kind of sense of uh, excitement and uh, inevitability in some way that this is a way of solving an entire category of uh, challenges that were not easy to solve before. Um, uh, th th that exists in the blockchain space. Um, it's tempered somewhat by this recognition that any example I could give you of where blockchain technology is being used or could be used, somebody could always turn around and say, well, can't you just do that with a centralized uh, system? And the answer is always yes. In fact, it's probably going to be cheaper. It's probably going to be faster and easier to update to have a central you know, system, a central person there, a central company uh, uh, you know, being at the middle of these transaction records. But what's the cost of having one person there? That's something we don't have really good uh, models for understanding the, the cost strategically, the cost operationally, um, to have to trust that, that person in the middle, that company in the middle. So it's hard to make a case now for blockchain technology on you know, efficiency, on scale. I mean, it's not a big data tool, right? It's kind of a small, small data tool in a way. Um, uh, so that's, that's where it's, people are being much more realistic uh, than uh, today than they might have been in the early days of the internet. Uh, but I find that healthy. I find that skepticism really rewarding. Uh, and I mean, another big difference between 2019 and 1995 is that we're all a little bit more skeptical about technology in general. You know, in 1995, the future was big and bright, and let's go in there with both feet and jump in and make it happen. And right now, people are looking at some of the um, challenges we've had with the adoption of the internet and digital technologies and society, and saying, whoa, let's maybe not move fast and break things. Let's uh, move cautiously and be thoughtful, right? Uh, and that's, that's been a great thing, I think, for the blockchain in, uh, industry. I think the first industries to be uh, uh, radically changed by blockchain technology are the financial industry, for sure. Everything that they do involves a ledger somewhere. Uh, and today, many of those processes are very um, limited by very manual processes, reconciliation that causes transactions to be dropped on the ground or have to involve a lot of effort to, to reconcile. I, 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 there are, um, I, I, and, and the finance industry is more than just what happens on Wall Street or what happens, you know, in, in a bank. Uh, every company touches finance at one point or another. They send payments, they collect payments from uh, from their their customers or, or or the likewise. So, I think these things end up being very horizontal, right? So it's an industry so far as it's a whole collection of uses, and there are certain big companies centered there. But every company gets affected by that. Likewise with supply chains. I mean, there are some companies like FedEx and uh, uh, Maersk and others that are core to global supply chains, but every company participates in a supply chain at some point. And so every company and the way that they source and, and finance and uh, uh, move packages around and trace the origin of packages uh, and know whether the party in the other end of the planet that they're dealing with is a good party, like all of that will change through the use of this technology. Um, I don't know that there's any industries that disappear entirely uh, or uh, any business models that fundamentally go away unless your business model is to be that person in the middle and it, have everybody come through you and you extract rent from that. If that's your business model, you might you know, uh, have some issues. 
but that's also an opportunity. If you recognize see that coming and you reinvent yourself, uh, you can uh, be a facilitator for a broader ecosystem, potentially much more valuable than what you can handle as a central provi provider. I think we, we still uh, have not had the amount of time to understand uh, what, are the, what are the physics of this technology? What are the limitations, right? Um, there, it somewhat defies easy, uh, 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 easy ways to characterize. Like even something as simple as transactions per second. How many transactions per second can a blockchain network process? Um, it's very hard to estimate that ahead of time. It, it very much is dependent on are you doing a global network with nodes all over the world where that might slow things down? Um, uh, what is a transaction? What can you squeeze into one transaction rather than pepper across hundreds, right? So that's a very nerdy kind of answer to that is, you know, there's still a lot of just, you know, journeyman's kind of experience with these tools that we need to build a generational capacity around. Uh, which is why education is important, why open source software and getting this out there is really important. Uh, and then uh, secondly, for a lot of businesses, they are rightfully worried. Are they ripe for commoditization? Are they, is the thing that they've held tight on, uh, the value add of being that central party about to, to disappear, right? They certainly don't want to accelerate that disappearance before they have their next uh, thing ready. Uh, so uh, there's an institutional resistance. Um, uh, and I think a lot of that will be overcome by not necessarily the leader in a market or the number two in a market, but by those companies that are numbers three to infinity, <laughs> partnering together into a consortium to solve their problems collectively and, and uh, eliminate some of the cost in their, in their, in their community. And, and part of those costs is fraud and corruption. Fraud and corruption are a tax on a, any marketplace, right? The good actors have to pay that tax and the bad actors get away with not paying it. And so most people are incented to come up with systems that make it harder to perpetrate fraud, make it harder to escape uh, appropriate kinds of regulations. And these are technologies that can substantially help with that. But understanding how to apply that is still something we need a whole generation of business leaders to, 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 to come up to speed on. I believe over the next few years, um, I, we see steady, continued progression in deployment of these technologies in lots of different sectors, but it still will see, be seen as uh, uh, something on the periphery, right? I, I, I don't believe by 2020 there's necessarily a major marketplace that says you have to be blockchain or no, um, uh, or, 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 or get out of here, right? Um, by 2025, though, I think we'll be at the point where uh, very many, perhaps even most, of the major marketplaces of the world, the major supply chains, the major financial markets, the major um, cooperative networks out there will say, we need this system of record. We need this way of automating agreements you know, using smart contracts. We need this way of, of uh, solving the dig digital identity challenges. And by 2025, it'll be much more the presumption that blockchain technology will underpin uh, many, of the business, many, uh, many of the operations that every business will be in.